deal with my own struggles, I created Mental Health Monday. I started Mental Health Monday on Instagram to create a positive platform where people could share their struggles and their triumphs about mental health and mental illness. Mental Health Monday has become something bigger than I ever imagined and I couldn't be more thankful for that because I get messages all the time from people saying, thank you for Mental Health Monday. I thought I was alone in this. You know, I realize other people are struggling too. And it's not just me, it's not me, it's you guys. It's every single person that shares. And, and like I said, I just wanna say thank you because you are making a world of difference. Welcome back to the Farmer to Farmer live stream here in Omaha, the annual event, 2019 version. You just saw a clip from Tara Beaver Coronado. She is actually one of our guests here to talk with us a little bit about it. Tara, tell us about your video. What did we just see? So what you guys just saw was my kind of description of what Mental Health Monday is and a little bit of why I started it. Um, so pretty much I, I started Mental Health Monday to open up a positive platform to people to just share about their struggles and their wins too and that's kind of what I was describing in that video. Talk to us about how just the whole thing started. What You're on YouTube. We just heard from a bunch of social media farmers and, and obviously being able to find a platform to talk about these issues is so, is so important. What, what was your journey to doing that like? Yeah, so I actually am, I'm more active on Instagram, but I just got on YouTube and I think making that video kind of helped people understand why I do do it. Um, I dealt with a lot of anxiety. I still deal with anxiety. And that was kind of before I became a farmer. And once I started farming, I, like everything just escalated, you know, anxiety and stress, my, my normal life and then farming on top of it. And once I started sharing my farming journey on social media, I just felt like I needed to be honest about this as well. You know, the struggles that I deal with. And I, I just started sharing it and the people were kind of like, oh, I feel that way too. Like I didn't know that other people felt that way. And so I was like, okay, you know, hashtags are like the thing. So I'm like, I'm gonna start this hashtag, Mental Health Monday, and if you wanna share, you can share. If you just wanna read, you can read. And it's really grown to be bigger than I ever expected. And it's amazing the messages I get of people just being like, I had no idea anyone else felt this way. Like I get people all the, all the time saying like, this is exactly how I feel. And like, I don't feel alone anymore. People open up. And then you also get like positive messages too, just, just to spread positivity. And yeah, so it, I didn't expect it to turn into what it did, you know, but I love it. When you get messages like that, how do you, what do you tell those people? How do you work with them? I mean, if you've got a ton of messages like that, how do you find your way through that? What do you do to help them? So the very first thing I say is that I am not a mental health professional. Like I just want people to know that from the beginning, you know, everything I'm saying is just my experience. And the most important thing for those people is to reach out to a professional, you know, cause I don't have those powers or, you know, and um, I actually just recently took a class called mental health first aid because I didn't know how to respond to those messages because yeah. you know sometimes I'd get messages of people struggling and I was kind of at a loss like I don't want to say the wrong thing I don't want to point them in the wrong direction so taking that class was so helpful because it was really it, it's really about just letting people know you are there for them like they can vent to you but in the end you've got to see a professional you know and, and it's not a bad thing it's okay to not be okay you know Right. And, and just knowing that you can reach out to people and talk to them, and I just try to lead them in that direction, really. Well, and, we, and we were talking about that earlier, right? And so that reaction you get from farmers, uh, and you've gotten all types of different reactions, yeah. and you say, go find the right people to talk to. That's the, that's the problem with farmers, is that we're stubborn, naturally, <laughs> yeah. right? We don't want to admit. I that, don't know any stubborn ones. Right, <laughs> none at all? Good, you're a lucky man. Um, <laughs> But it's that reaction, it's the same thing at, at FBN. We talk about healthy farms. Healthy financially, but healthy mentally. Healthy, you know, healthy different in ways. General. In yeah, general. Healthy in general. And this Full is just circle. part of it. Yeah. And that rural isolation, people don't realize it. So that yeah. reach out, social media has really been valuable. Yes. And you're just a great example of why that is valuable. 
because there are people that are going through the same things, mm -hmm. right? Get to the right people, have the conversation, be open about it, Yeah. right? Don't ignore it. And that's key, that's huge. Yeah, don't ignore it and support systems. I, I think support is so important, you know, whether it's a family member or going and talking to a therapist, like, find a good support system, you know, and, and, and just keep talking to them about how you're feeling. And, and I think one thing that I hope the FBN Health kind of gets into is like really gearing towards farmers, you know, like finding people that understand, because it's a different stress, you know, it's a diff or, or any business owner. That's a different stress than, than everyday life stress. Not that everyday life stress isn't hard, because it right. is, you know. But they, someone that just kind of understands what goes on in farm life and, and what causes that anxiety, you know? It's a different industry because you're so, so personally connected to your farm, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's what we love to do and it's in, in a lot of cases, in most cases, certainly around me, it's what we've always done. Yeah. So when that stress builds up, you can't go home and get away from it at the end of the it's day. It's the most exactly. personal business you can have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I think so. Well, and yeah. I think what I, what I hear from a lot of farmers who I've, I've worked with is that it's really that network that's gone. It's, people don't have that support system, whether it's because, you know, farms have consolidated, there's fewer jobs in rural communities, like, your friends move away. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think a lot of people struggle with. They lose that network. And, and yeah, and now, and now social media is a big way that people are, are, re, are finding is. that again, finding new networks, different networks, finding people to relate to. Yeah, I have to say the the power of social media. I mean, I know there's negativity, but all, like the positive for me has been overwhelming. Like because I especially like where I live, I don't really know a lot of young farmers. I know a couple, but like I have been able to connect with so many people and I have this new community and people I can tell like, "Oh, I'm feeling this stress." And they're like, "Okay, we get it. Like this is what we've tried." And and that helps because I'm talking to people that understand. And when you're out there in the middle of nowhere, that that can be hard, you know, to find those people to talk to. Yeah. And if you think about support structure, right? Part of that we try to facilitate at FBN, just having FBN health and that. But support structure is family. It's friends on social media. It doesn't mean it has to be down the street. It can be someone to talk to, vent, share stories yeah. about. Those types of support structure. You take those things, and plus I, on, I honestly believe that we need better relationships with our primary care physician so that we can have those honest conversations mm -hmm. about getting to a therapist, the yeah. right therapist. If you can create that support structure, I mean, we have a support structure in everything we do in farming, right? Whether it's a, a agronomic support or this or that, this is no different. This is as important to the health of a farm and to a family as anything else. Or more, because if you lose, if you start losing that yeah. mental health and that starts crumbling, everything is at risk, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, he, well, go ahead. I, even, I think for a lot of farmers that I talk to, just Healthcare itself is such a big stressor. It really is. I mean, not ha not being able to access it. It is people's full time jobs to manage purchasing healthcare, and then farmers are you know supposed to do it in the evenings or on the weekends or sometime when you know yeah. they'd love to be at their kids' Christmas performance. So, yeah. I, I every kind of the stress is there at every level in, in ways that I don't think a lot of people understand. It, it's one of those they always say farmers wear lots of hats. It's another hat that a, that a farmer or a farm family wears that you're not, you, you work for a large company, there's a benefit administrator. You know, there's people yeah. that help you make choices, make decisions, find coverage. Farmers don't have that. It's, it's difficult. It's just another hat you have to wear and it's something you have to stay on top of. You're in and you're out when it comes to choices, coverage, things like that for your family as you change. So it's hard to do. How does FBN help with that? Well, I mean, Part of what you we like do at that? FBN is educate. I, I, that was very smooth and <laughs> ob not obvious at all. <laughs> but it's like everything else we do. It's around transparency, it's around education, content, uh, working with Tara, working with different individuals to get the word out, to get the message out. And then when you want to speak to a professional, whether it's about coverage or getting to the right physician, we can help with that. So a lot of what we do is really just about education, let alone actually offer you know, an option for someone that might not have a lot of options when it comes to coverage. So there's there's a lot of things we're trying to do, but it always, again, supports the mission of helping farmers have healthy farms. Yeah. Well, and Lucas, I wonder if you could offer some advice. I mean, I think it's like, I will repeat, it's people's full-time job to figure out what the best health insurance is, where the coverage is, how you can keep your doctor, how which plan is the most affordable and offers the benefits you want. Any advice for farmers on how to tackle that? It, it feels impossible. 
It is, because the traditional routes, I mean, there's some options from some associations in, in the ag industry. There's some options to go. Some people might have some decent relationships with a local broker to talk about their options for healthcare. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is just be like, call FPN, we have a department to help support that. Whether you're in Minnesota or you're in Illinois or wherever it is, have the conversation and quite honestly, we'll walk you through what that is. You have to talk about what does your family need, right? There's high deductibles, there's low deductibles. Do you need dental vision? Do you want to talk about uh, what your provider networks are? What access to make sure you keep your physician or if you're not wed to a specific pr uh, primary care provider, we can find an, a provider network for you to find the right support. So those are the types of things that you want to look for. And then cost, cost is important. You might be able to keep your existing primary care provider and then save money because we've been able to you know, negotiate in better rates across the national network than you can locally. So price is important, access to providers is important, and choices for your farm. We help that out. You can do it through some other sources. I'm not saying we're the only option, but the trick is find two or three options, and it's like pricing chem, it's like buying seed, it's like making decisions on your farm. You have to look at that annually. It's not something that you can put to bed and, and not think about for three or four years. Yeah. You have to spend a little bit of time, but there are resources out there for you to do it. And, we're, and we can help with that. Absolutely. Lucas, Tara, thank you guys so much for joining us. This is such an important conversation. It is. One that we could honestly have for days and days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we know that you guys have a lot of conference to get to, so thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for uh, having really us. Thank you guys. for having us. Thank you. Absolutely.